This is a very late video on England's on the 21 win. Congratulations to the boys out there who have been playing in Romania and Georgia. A superb achievement, but it has to be said. It is a B team tournament. It's not going to guarantee future success for the senior team, but it is a huge indicator of how much England grassroots and youth development has improved. It's England's first under 21 championship win since 1984. Of course, in 2017, England won the under 17 and the under 20 World Cups. And of course, the England women's team won the European Championships at the women's tournament last year. So, um, I'm going to go through, of course, the players. Of course, um, Taylor Harwood Bennis was brilliant at the back alongside Levi Colville. Max Aaron's still uncapped at 23 years old, but he's one to look out for since, of course, the likes of Trippier and Walker are going to age. And of course, uh, what's his name? Rico Lewis is probably going to be a threat for right back very soon as well. Goalkeeper for me, the player of the tournament, James Trafford. Spent last season playing on low at Bolton in League One. And he course, of course, he's a Man City Academy player. And he will be playing for Burnley next season. Definitely one to look out for. And I will not, and, we, and I am definitely certain he is going to get an England call up soon. Did not concede a single goal throughout the tournament. And of course, say hey, what can be said, he was just fantastic. Making saves after saves. And his crowding moment came when Spain had a penalty in the last minute. And he made a double save. Absolutely saved England's backside. But that, of course, in a game that was very tight and cagey with Spain. Making a lot of hard challenges on the English players in the final England beat Germany in the group stages, they beat Portugal in the quarterfinals, they destroyed Israel 3-0 in the semis. Has been pretty much the closest to a 10 out of 10 type of tournament for England, but of course we have to remember this is under 21 level, so I'm not going to get carried away. Of course, in front of the defence, there all were a few fairly old oldish players like Anthony Gordon and Morgan Gibbs, while you are now like 22, 23 years old, so... It is a bit concerning that they've still not been capped for England. And it has to be said, if they ever do get capped, I don't think they'll ever become squad regulars, to be honest, unless they demonstrate something special, because, of course, they'll be fighting the likes of Phil Foden, Bakaya Saka, and amongst others. Then behind them in midfield, Curtis Jones, 22 years old. Maybe a potential England regular, but he is taking a bit of time to develop. Um... Harvey Elliott, I think he's only 19, 20 years old. Not being that impressed by him, but maybe with his tenacity he could get better. But right now he just looks like a new James Milner. Um, who else was playing in midfield? Oh yeah, Jacob Ramsey got injured very early on. Very unlucky. He'll miss out the first six weeks of next season for Aston Villa. Um, but non Noni Mudweke Mou Mou was very good down the right hand side. Got to be a good prospect for Chelsea next season, and he's definitely surely in for a big and call up at some point. Got, I mean, you know, because I will say with England winning the under twenty one tournament, that proves that England now have decent squad depth. So in case of obviously we have an injury crisis. Someone like Cole Palmer could get caught up. Emil Smith Rowe, if he can go and find some playing time outside of Arsenal. You know, we've got options. You know, like there's no. Ex I've got to say this England in the next three years, I've got to win a tournament Euro 2024 and the 2026 World Cup because right now I can only think of about maybe two countries, maybe three countries that might have deeper squad depth but that's probably France, Spain and Brazil it's not right now the likes of Portugal, Germany Italy in particular are not at their best in terms of international football squad depth they can be beaten and you know with the way England play especially this tournament keeping the ball on the ground not relying on free kicks and corners like they, they, we have been traditionally known for you know 
no longer relying on crosses into the box like we did when we had the likes of David Beckham and Gerrard in the team 20 years ago for the senior squad. No more relying on big tall men like Heskey and Peter Crouch to win headers up in the air. Like, Lee Carsley and Ashley Cole have implemented a far more technical style of football, a lot more keeping the ball on the ground. You know, the old school way of knocking it long and trying to get the crosses to beat the first man is over. We are very much now becoming a far more more globalised style of football we're witnessing on our, on, that we are now playing. England look a lot more tidy, like the days of players being picked on in terms of pure physicality, you know, super quick players like Rooney, Owen, Defoe, Walcott, Wright Phillips or either, or alternatively your big target men like your Heskies and your Peter Crouchers and your Carlton Coles are beginning to be very much a thing of the past, if we're going to be honest. It's a far more technical, fluid style of football. And well done to the lads, you know. I'm not going to say that they're all going to play for England eventually, since, of course, there's only about 40% of 121 players that ever get capped at senior level. And, of course, you have to realise some of them will end up playing for other nations. What one day since, of course, um, FIFA do allow you to change your, your allegiances at international football. So, of course, we might well be seeing some of, some of these young lads switch to another nation if they're eligible. But, you know, England, good job, lads.